Island stand amongst the waves Out here From Inishmore and Inishmion To Inishir The ocean lives amongst us Grinding rocks around us We're just making sand out here Prehistoric forts were laid out here And monks and scholars welcomed saints and peers From cliffs where forts are standing Some rocks below are landing Just making sand out here And the roads they see said Rossville Long ago With bones of barren marrow Shared blood with Connemara We're just making sand out here The seaside yields a fertile sod out here Fishermen have another god to fear The sea it gives a plenty but it can take so quickly Just making sand out here An ancient language is ingrained out here A Celtic culture still maintained so dear Edan cheer la chango Anna Mukhasin Chichanta just making sand out here. And the roads they see said Rossaville. Long ago they rode their Karachs here with bones of barren marrow, shared blood with Connemara. We're just making sand out here I've been listening to Porek Jack all the way from the Aran Islands. Uh, you're very welcome to Sessions from Oblivion. Thanks very much. Great to be here. How was the uh, How was the trip up? It was nice. Now coming across country, you know, right. haven't, haven't been doing much of that lately. Of you, late, you, but uh, you were happy to get out of Dodge, were you? Happy to get out of Dodge. That's I think uh, half. I'd say half the crack of being being a musician is the crack traveling to, to and from gigs. You know, yes, indeed, in the car yeah. and stuff. So we, we had a good. And now that we're in lockdown, on. how's how's that on Inishmore? Um, it's it's. Well, like everywhere, it's kind of funny. I mean, f during full lockdown in the summer was kind of nice because it's normally, it's a very, it's a big tourist spot, you know, it attracts a lot of tourists, which is great. Mm -hmm. But in my lifetime, I don't think there was ever a summer where there weren't many people around, where the island is really quiet. Yeah. So normally go going home in summer, it's like busy. You know, my parents have a pub, they work in tourism. 
So it's always you're you're always been roped into work. Whereas during lockdown, it was actually like nice to go for walks and swimming and whatever, right. and just not many people around. But yeah. not that I'm complaining. It's uh, we love having people around. But and as, you know. as a younger man, you used to play in your dad's pub. I, I did. And I still do. Well, not not at the moment, but yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, so that's well, that's where I learned the ropes. I, I think. must check it. What's the pub called? Uh, Joe Watties, Joe Watties Bar and Restaurant. Joe Watties. Joe Watties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's I'll give you bell we're, we're, not the, we're not the Watties, no. It's just the, it's the name of the pub. Right. So my parents are there for the last ten years or so. Okay. Yeah. So, so you started playing music there, playing some covers and ballads and stuff. And yeah. When did you start to write? Um, I started to write about when I started learning guitar. I think um, I actually my, my, my I asked my brother once. He was showing a chord to a friend of ours, a friend of his, once in the house, and I said, "Jesus, show me. Will you show me one as well?" And I kind of. I didn't turn back. I didn't look back after that. I thought you, the way you were saying it was he only knew the one. Well, I'll, I'll yeah. show you the chord. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's a bass player, but he had started on guitar. But um, I think when I when I got that, I mean, my dad's a musician and a songwriter, and my my uncle and my cousins, and we're all we're family musicians. It's in the blood. It's in the blood. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's great having learning an instrument. You know, you've you've someone around you. It's like you've teachers around you all the time. You know, right? It's good student teacher ratio. Um, so I, I would I started straight away learning printing off chords of songs and. You know, okay. learning chords. But I think I started writing early on as well. Like yeah. pretty early on, I think um, I started writing words and and and, um, and songs and just went from there. I love this. Thanks very much. Your, your new you. album, uh, yeah. Making Sound, of which we were just listening to the title track. Yeah. What's that about? Making Sound. So, yeah, I wrote that about, it, about a couple of years ago. Um, uh, it's about, I don't really know what it was about. It just kind of came out. But I think I was on the island at the time and I think it was in kind of winter and a stormy night I think I think it was basically just about life on the island before like a bit, it incorporated the, the song is a bit of the history of the island and also just ongoing life and I think it's just kind of an observation of the island that the rocks it's the rocks in this in the, in the water mm. uh, they were there long before people in, inhabited them and they'll be there okay. long after and I think it's just like it's just a just an observation of the of the land I think and right. ongoing and life on it you know yeah so I think I think that's what it's about I think you know yeah. So um, we're actually making a video for it at the moment, and we're kind of look. That we're asking that exact question. We're trying to answer that exact question. So, right. Yeah. I was. Um, we were advertising for for people to play on the show, and we had lots of pop and rock, and uh, I'm I'm delighted to be Damien Dempsey's agent. And I oh, sent yeah. him a text message last Thursday and said, "Who's who's mm -hmm. new singer songwriter? Maybe with a folk ballad thing." And a two seconds flat. Uh, Pori Jack. He's the man. So um, we checked it out. We loved it, and John gave me your number. So you're you're uh, you're mixing with some big fish there. You got John Reynolds to uh, produce the album. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think I I suppose that people actually often ask how I got in touch with him or how it happened. But I mean, I I, I kind of got in touch and sent him a couple of songs, and um, basically I had one particular song that I wanted to record, and I I was never I, I wasn't happy with. Well, I didn't know myself what I wanted, and I tried recording it a couple of different times, and I was never happy with what was coming out. So I needed I needed someone to produce it, someone to tell to take a bit of control of it, you know. Yeah. And I looked up a few different people, and he was one of the people, and I loved particularly what he had done with vocals on the albums that he had recorded, or at right. least that I thought he had recorded, including actually demo Damien Dempsey's album um, Soul uh, Soul Sun yes. a few years ago, um, album, yeah. or was it the previous one? Anyway, I can't remember. It was one of those that one or the one before it, and he had done different work with I think, David Keenan and then I knew what he'd done with Sinead O'Connor who I okay. think is the best Irish yes. singer you know and uh, Brian and, Eno and David worked, Byrne from Talking Heads he, yeah John's worked with tons of people he's yeah. worked with these yeah and uh, these guys and obviously so I know the, the calibre of of musician he is and so I, I, I suppose I worked with him and we worked on that one song and I really liked how it went which you know which wasn't a given I suppose beforehand you know yeah. And also it was to see how he worked with me, if he enjoyed working with me. And we just ended up, he was like, okay, that's great. Have you any more? Right. And we just did another song. And Well, well the first song um, that uh, Damien had recommended was the one I listened to, which is a first listen. So um, let's have a listen to uh, Mini. <laughs> Many ever lived her life out loud with her sunshades on, ever singing a song. Many married to a middle-aged man, didn't marry for love. She was happy enough, she said, you who am I doing it right? I said, Minnie, you 
her fading light. Many drives with a bright smile on, lets her curls hang down, they speak volumes of fun. But honest eyes complied in a lie, she was incomplete, she was starting to die, and she said, Oh, oh, am I doing it right? I said, Mini, you've got to set things right. And as we drank some wine and watched the sun go down in the back room. Minnie said what she had to say Now her husband's gone, he didn't touch her anyway Single mom reignites her spark Minnie's holding strong, her noose is gone And she said, woohoo, I can feel it again A new woman, she said, need not pretend anymore And like wide-eyed teens, we set our spirit At the windowsill against her soft back skin And I wanted to tell her more, but I never did And I wanted to give her more, but I never did And I wanted to love her more Minnie scared me off, it was a step too far I couldn't see what we had been, just a fling run thing But I set the scene, I said, I, I can commit to this She said, after two nights, we can just be friends And as the Galway sky, let the sun pass by in silence We drank our last red wine And watched the sun go down And said goodbye And Minnie's happy now She found love somehow Okay, that was Porrick Jack playing Minnie, uh, one of my, my favourites, a real, a real first listener. But I have to say, anything you play today, they, they are, they're very accessible tunes, very strong, but straightforward as well. Thanks very much. Is that, is that what you're going for? Um, I, would, I wouldn't say I'm going for it. Maybe it's just the way they, they, they come out, I suppose. Right. Um, I mean, I, I do, I, I, melody is a big thing, probably the biggest thing for me, really, I guess, yeah. when I'm... In, Compo well, com composing or writing a song, maybe. Um, uh, uh, well, along with lyrics, so that's not, that's not necessarily What's true. What's first when, when you're writing? Is it um, the melody or...? You, usually the melody, yeah. Sometimes right. words first, but m usually the melody. I have yeah. this image of you on the, the beach in Inishmore with your acoustic guitar, wind windswept, <laughs> or yeah. crab fishing or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, are, you, are you the typical island man? I, I, I'm, as T Tommy Tiernan said once, I think he lived out in Ireland once, he said he gets blisters pointing. I kind of use that joke. I, I'm no. I've never been fishing in my life, which yeah. is kind of uh, shameful. Being an islander, really. But, yeah, and that I've is fished them on both sides of my family. But um, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, no, it's, it's at, at the piano now, or in front of a fire, maybe with a hot whiskey, maybe hot whiskey. It's more accurate. Right. Are you a stout man? D uh, I am. I am. The indeed, look yeah. of a stout drinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed, yeah. I would. I miss them. I haven't had one in a while Gosh, now. I know. I know. Yeah. 
Um, you were to launch in England. You, you've got mm -hmm. a record label over there. You had yeah. tour planned, and obviously that's all been yeah. put on hold. Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, yeah. So I work with a, a label and an agent, an agent over there, and as, like as well as here. I mean, I'm obviously working in both places, but I think because I'd been recording in the UK and I'd been over there a bit, um, and then it happened that I had a tour, a couple of tours with Sharon Shannon over there last year. Um, I've kind of I've decided to maybe focus a bit more on working over there, you right. know. Um, so the how were the gigs with Sharon? Oh, brilliant, great, yeah, it was it was amazing. Just seeing how it all worked, the tour, the whole thing works, and arriving at a venue, you know, these big sold out venues every night, and hundreds of people waiting to hear, listen to my music and my songs and the words, and really attentive crowds, yes. which is what I'd always dreamed of, you know. Yeah. Um, and you, so. you've bagged some uh, special guest slots for Damien Dempsey's tour in I have. May June. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I can't can't wait for those. Yeah, you, we're yeah. really hoping they 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 happen. Yeah, they know. were to happen. I think it was initially last April, as it, you know. It, three times. Three times they've been, been re, re, rescheduled. Yeah, so yeah, we're hoping not for a fourth. But yeah, so I, I, I really can't wait. And it's happened a couple of times. I mean, not a couple, a few times. People have actually said they they were, they thought I remind my music either me or my music reminds them of they've compared me to Damien Dempsey as well. So I, I can see I, that. So I don't know, I don't yeah. know if there's two or not, but I, I'm really excited. To, there's an honesty in it. Do. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the accessibility. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, yeah so I'm looking forward to seeing, to putting the, the contrast and trying to live up, you know, right. doing a good job before opening his shows, you know. And you'll do some of your own shows too, I'm sure. Yeah, ho and hopefully, yeah. So um, yeah. I'd, a good few of my own shows, sh shows were, were cancelled and put back as well. And okay. myself and the lads, we did a, we'd a few, few gigs. We were really excited. We had a gig in the Roisin Dove just before the latest lockdown. We were just all rehearsed and ready to go. And it was going to be my, our first time with like the drum kit, the full band sound. And yeah. um, then obviously lockdown happened again, but sure, it'll come around again. Yes, it will, know. it will, it will. Um, okay, so uh, part of the show, I get a Zoom call with an industry professional and ask them for their tips and tricks, uh, advice for young up and coming artists. And in this episode, we have Jackie Hayden. Hello, Jackie, how are you, sir? I'm very good, Andrew. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're, you're locked good, down good. in sunny Wexford. I am indeed, yeah. I am probably uh, safer for me here. I'm probably safer for the rest of the country if I stay here for a while as well. But I won't be going out. You're a bit of a hermit there anyway, so is there, there's probably no change for you at the moment. Well, it wasn't at the beginning, no. It was actually quite easy for me because I work from home. And I just kept working from home. I'm semi-retired anyway, but anything I had to do, I would have done it from home. But I did miss slipping out for the odd cup of coffee or the odd drink or the odd argument with, with some of my neighbours. Right, right. Um, I was reading in an article you wrote recently, it was a great term, uh, arseholery. Uh, you, yes. you, said, <laughs> you mentioned that some of the rock stars you'd interviewed, and possibly yourself on occasion, were guilty of arseholery. And I've, I've, I've taken that term as my own now. All right. Well, I did admit that I was guilty of it uh, you did. Uh, myself, although I did put in a proviso that not necessarily too often. No, but no. I, I, I would have I would have been guilty of it uh, maybe a few times down to yeah. The, the, yeah. the years. Right. Right. And of course, um, you signed you two to their first recording contract with CBS mm -hmm. and, yep. on, and many, many decades with Hot Press and millions of articles there and wrote a few books and a bit of an icon of Irish rock and roll. But really, before we get to that, the, the, the main thing I want to ask is beard maintenance. How do we maintain these beards? Well, I always tend to feel that the, the, the secret is to sleep with your beard outside the, 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 the bed covers. Um, if you sleep with a beard under the bed covers, then you're not allowing the facial hair to, to actually sort of breathe properly. Okay, okay. Because mine started as just laziness, and um, I'm finding now there, there's a bit of maintenance involved. Uh, there is, but there shouldn't be that much. It should be shorter uh, amount of maintenance per day than if you were actually shaving. Yeah. I would have yeah. thought. Yeah. I would so you're it. actually economical. With, you're being economical with your time if you have a beard. Yeah. You can devote it to other things. Right, right, important. okay. Sage advice, as always, Jackie. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good start, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this segment is Tips and Tricks for uh, mm. aspiring <clears throat> artists uh, for whatever genre. And of course you, you did the, there was a demo dip or first cuts. There was various different yeah. names in Hot Press magazine where yeah. you review stuff. 
Mm. I did actually for 15 years, I did six demos per fortnight. Somebody frightened me by actually saying that that amounted to about 2,300 or something, which um, a lot of demos. seems to be a huge slice of my life, yeah. right, listening to demos and writing about them. Time you'll never get back, Jackie. I will not, know. I hope it's appreciated by everybody out there. Who, who's the, what, what was the best demo you ever reviewed? Oh, that's a tough one because um, Mine. there's so many. and it's the last, I haven't reviewed any since for about, I don't know, 10 years or more. Right. Um, they all merge into one. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the ones, remember, the, ones, the ones I remember, the ones I remember most were the, were the awful ones. I got some, some sent by some Nazi record label that were, was holed up in Kerry or somewhere. Right. And I, I um, reviewed it and I found, I found kind of listening to, to the stuff, it was so anti-Semitic and vile. Uh, but at the same time, I felt it was my job to listen to with an open mind. But my mind closed very soon afterwards, I'm afraid. That's a true story. Anti-Semitic. Very true story, yeah. Yep. Rock band in but I lied to you, Andrew. Do you think I, I, I would lie? Right. No, yeah, I, no, I, no. I, no, of course mm, not. Mm, okay. Mm. All right. So um, of the three tips and tricks, what's number one? Uh, number one is if you're planning to uh, make a, a livelihood out of the music industry, then the first thing you have to accept is that it's a business. And uh, if you can't deal with that, then maybe you need to forget about the career bit and just have as much fun uh, with your music as you can. And then you'll, you'll be spared all the pain and all the frustration and all the, the worry. Uh, I think if you want to look at a, the business side, you really also have to look at the most likely source of income. And now that the sales of recordings pay so little, that's live music. And that, unfortunately, is almost totally off the agenda at the moment for the foreseeable future because of the pandemic. And that really only leaves songwriting as a potential income. And that requires getting your music uh, used in places where you'll actually get it'll generate some money for you. And that isn't easy either. And I think artists need to look at the reality of the whole situation before they plunge in. And then they need to work out some kind of a map that will help them get from where they are now to where they want to get to. Uh, is, that, that'd be that my number one. The manager? I mean, you know, if Sorry? you're creative, if, if you're the new, I don't know, Bono or Mike Scott or, or whoever, um, you, you, you won't necessarily have any business acumen you know, maybe that's why you, you get someone in to do that for you. No, well, all the people who make it really big have a lot of business acumen. They mightn't start out with it, but they get it very, very quickly. It doesn't matter whether it's Noel Gallagher or Bono or Bob Dylan or whoever. They all find out very quickly that they need to pay attention to their own situation and not leave their financial future in the hands of others. And that, to me, makes perfect sense. I believe artists should protect their own art and their own creativity by also keeping an eye on the money side of things. Right, okay. And what's, that, what's tip number two? Um, I think if you're going to go for it, I don't see any reason why people shouldn't think big. Uh, you can easily get bogged down by just becoming a local act and trying to make a, a big impression locally, which is a great way of starting. But I always feel that there are something like 8 billion people on the planet. And there's a reasonable chance that at least some of them will like what you do. And if you can find ways of getting your music to them and you can build from there. Um, hardly anybody starts out at the top anyway. They start local, they start low and they build it and they build it outwards. But I think it's good to have a kind of a long term view of the big picture. And it's worth remembering as well that being from Ireland, uh, can give uh, acts uh, a head start because Ireland is hugely respected on the international music scene. Uh, we're supposed to be among the top half dozen providers of hit artists to the international market. So I think doors open quite easily for artists from Ireland in a way that maybe they've done from other countries. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. That's, mm. that's cool. I like that. Yeah. Right. Good. And, uh, number three. Um, I think uh, you can't forget that there's a huge level of competition out there. And while on the one hand, that might look like a negative thing, it actually should inspire you to try harder and maybe try to be as creative with your marketing as you are with your music. Um, but you can take heart from the fact, perhaps, that despite all the obstacles that there are to 
getting to the top or the the, 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 the toppermost of the poppermost, as the Beatles used to say. Lots of artists have done it and are still doing it. And I always feel that if they can do it, you can do it. And I think ultimately it can come down to you not only having the talent, but having the, term, the determination to go all the way with it and get what you create out to as many people as possible and working on it from there. You know, you, you were marketing manager for CBS before um, you were head, one of the head honchos in, in Hot Press and that. So you obviously have a great understanding of, of the business end, which, which is why well, yeah. your, your points are pertaining to that, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I, you have to be very uh, sort of focused on the business side of things. Uh, my uh, task, I believed, was to do whatever I could to get the music of the artists on CBS heard. And once I did that, I felt that's my job done. If people hear the music and don't like it or they hear it and buy it, that's great. But my task was to try to get it heard and written about and listened to and whatever, by whatever means possible. But I've always had a kind of a very practical uh, approach to the whole music thing. Uh, nothing really happens by itself. You have to make it happen. Yes. And I'm always uh, slightly irritated by bands who tell me, well, we're just going to make the album and put it out and see what happens. I can practically tell them in advance without any great uh, kind of ability to look into the future that nothing will happen. You actually have to make it happen. Yes. Uh, th this idea that somehow... You know, you just put the record out and something. I know. Massive, I've massive never massive seen it. And offer you a massive record deal, and away you go. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I. I. I may, if that happens by accident, great. It's wonderful. It's yeah. like finding a lotto ticket that ends up winning the lotto. But I wouldn't like to depend on that for no. my for paying my rent. You know, I think you have to try to make as things happen as much as you can. Okay. Jackie, thank you very much for this, and I really appreciate you taking the Zoom call, and mm -hmm. uh, look forward to hooking up. And yes, we'll meet again as soon as time for a cup of coffee. Yeah, as soon as the government allows it, we, we will convene, oh, maybe yeah. in a hostelry in Dublin. You and, always uh, do what the government says, I know. Yeah, and, and insult each other over nice cups of coffee. <laughs> as always. Well, what else is worth doing? <laughs> Thank you, Jackie Hayden. Talk to you. All soon. right. Thanks, Andrew. Thank Take care. Thank you, Jackie Hayden, for your uh, sage, uh, sagely words of, of wisdom. I do appreciate it. Uh, here with uh, Porrick Jack. And. Uh, where, where can people buy this magnificent album? So, yes, that's available on the easiest way is my website, porrickjack.com, or okay. through any of my social media link sites. You can link there, links there. So, yeah. on that or on um, goodeedsrecords.com, um, I think. The, right. the label's You're website. on the normal platforms, iTunes. All, and all the all normal that. platforms, Spotify. Yeah. And it's also on, it's in Tower Records and Golden Discs, also, actually. Right. So, yeah. Luca Bloom recently said um, he's taken himself off Spotify. Yeah. It was of no use to him at all. And he said he was living, I think he's in the West somewhere. I think he's in Clare somewhere in, in a style, I think he's, yeah. yeah. And he said, look, I, I need the money. Albums aren't cheap. Um, so get to my website and uh, buy the album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what do you think of Spotify? I, I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what to think of it. I, I think you can, I, I understand what, like, what he's saying. And I, I mean, I agree with him really to a large extent, but also it's just, that's the nature of the market. That's the way that's the way it is. Yeah. It's there whether you like it or not. And there's different ways of looking at it. I mean, I, I wouldn't like, I don't even think of making money on streams, like, or barely even CDs. You know, it's like, it's just a, it's just a, it's a method to get your music heard, really. Um, right. There's a, an interesting comparison, I think, is if you think of getting streams on Spotify, is if you get your song played on Radio 1, say you get 100,000 people that will listen to it, for example, you know, 100,000 impressions, as they call it. If you, if you think of that as an equivalent of 100,000 plays on Spotify, that maybe maybe puts it into a better context of how, maybe what it, of the way it works, you know? Yeah. But um, I, I'd be inclined to agree with Luca Bloom. Um, that it, it's, not, it, it's grand to listen to the album, yeah. you know, but really it's not supporting the artist. No. And no. it's a brave move he's done as well. Yeah. You know, but I hope it works for him. Um, yeah. Mary Coughlin said there recently she's she gives away little pictures she paints little pictures oh yeah and if you buy the album off her directly you'll get a hand-painted picture yeah it went so well that she got her grandchildren in to paint pictures too great i yeah. thought it was a lovely idea good cottage industry going yes, there yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah so i'd be advising people to go to uh, porigjack.com yeah and you get the physical the, the physical cd and yeah you know the and the notes inside and all that i think i great. think 
for music, like for, mu- I won't say real music fans, but it's nice having the tangible thing, you know. Yes. That's why vinyl is coming back. And it like is, I'm looking yeah. forward to getting records pressed of my, of my album as well. Will you do but vinyl? I think on. we will at some point, yeah. The, the lads, yeah. In the label are, are, go- are planning to do it at some point because they're getting requests for it. So. Yeah, um, it's become quite disposable. You used to buy a record and, and you, had, you had the lyrics and stuff yeah. on it. And you'd, you know, and it, it was quite an investment. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it would stay with you. Whereas it has Spotify, certain, that there's nothing. It's, it's, it's like it devalues it. I mean, it, it, literally, it literally devalues it and it conceptually devalues it, I suppose, as a way of yeah. thinking about it. So I just see it as Spotify as, as it's a necessary evil or it's a, it's a vehicle for getting the music heard. Yes. I mean, if I was more, if I had a bigger name or my music was more um, widespread, maybe I could consider. But I, I don't think I can realistically... For me personally, I couldn't realistically take my music off it and expect to. Right, you know, you, you need the promotion of it, really. Yeah, exactly. No, maybe I could. I'm not saying, yeah. you know, but I think it'd be unlikely. That's just from where I'm sitting right now, you know. Yeah, but, well, uh, but I understand where he's coming from, you know. Yeah. Like I, when Damien recommended you, I went straight to Spotify. Okay, so, so yeah. It did you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. it is, it is yeah. easy, yeah. you know. But um, part of this show is to support Irish artists, and we're, we're saying to people, go directly to the artist website. Yeah. You know, buy, buy the record directly. Yeah, well, thanks very much. And the more of that, you know, yes. the better. And I think yeah. the other thing with Spotify, it is making people re reevaluate the, what they think of music and, you know, yeah. think of what do I like about it. And, you know, some it's, it's probably making some people go and buy music who mightn't have before. Right. You know, who, say who younger you people. To? Oh, loads of music. Um, Eagles, Van Morrison, James Taylor, R.E.M., Shinnad O'Connor. Yeah. Yeah, loads, loads of stuff. Okay. Um, Foy right. Vance being one of the newer ones. Before we play Dylan out, and obviously as well, you know, okay. big fan of his. Yeah. Before we play out with your final track, uh, Black Drapes, what's the song about? Black Drapes. Uh, briefly, it's a song I wrote. I was going through a tough time mentally a few years ago. I was having a bit of anxiety and feeling down, and you know, stuff for for a period of a couple of years. And I wrote that during the middle of that, particularly the first couple of verses, um, and it was pretty dark. You know, the black black drapes over in the. It's like black drapes and the red of hell was like the darkness in my head, okay. I suppose, is how I looked at it. Um, but then the second half of the song, it, I re- wrote later about when I was feeling better through talking to people and counselling and stuff. And I think that was maybe the put a brighter side in it, that it's all right now. Did the music help you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, the writing yeah. of the music? And the yeah, I creation. think so. I think the yeah. music is writing, writing and composing, even just playing and listening to music is very uh, therapeutic in itself. Anyway, right. I think... And, Were you and, depressed? I was, yeah, yeah, I was, okay. in, in, I was, although look, luckily for me, I mean, I was, I mean, I was, but it came on me over a period of, I don't really know, over a year maybe, I started to feel anxious first, and I, yeah. for me, there was a connection between the anxiety, then depression, right. and I'd go between the two, Yes. Uh, but I felt, I think I believed early on, I went to counselling and stuff straight away, or when I had my first panic attack, which I had a few, but I think I went to a counsellor straight away, and I think, whether she, the counsellor I went to she told me that look this 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 happened on you happened to you it kind of came on you so to speak as I say in Irish horny <laughs> shirt um, <clears throat> but I believed that I'd be able to get out of it because it just happened to me as opposed to being just something that was chemical or clinically right. you know the way I was born or something like it was an event some events happened that caused this to me caused okay. this to happen that therefore I might be able to reverse that and come out of it right. and I believed that I'd be able and through talking and counselling I was and luckily and over a year or two you know and right. I think luckily um, I was able to re- kind of recover um, I was lucky that I was able to do that without drugs or anything either you know you know yeah, or tablets or whatever so I could actually consider myself very lucky in a lot of ways because I know a lot of people maybe it's not as easy not the it was easy at the time, but right. I think that that's how I look at it. But yeah, that song, I, I was that prescribed was... antidepressants for a time. Yeah, didn't didn't like them at all, and I did therapy and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, I'm not and sure. Did you, yeah, and did... yeah, I don't know. I, I took myself off the, the the pills. I didn't like what they were doing to my head. Yeah, you know, because yeah, I know people. I, I had a warm like tea towel wrapped around my head. They were levelers. <clears> you yeah, wouldn't get depressed, but you wouldn't be getting all that happy and be thinking, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah, 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 and also, yeah, exactly, and. They're, they're a necessary thing for a lot of people maybe but yeah. at the same time they might necessarily be getting to the root of a problem yeah well, I think there's a problems. link with creativity as well yeah I, I know an awful lot of people they're creative people that, yeah and, and a lot of songwriters and I, I think that's because they're, they're going to places in their head where you know a baker might go or, or a mechanic or I, I don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah I think definitely yeah you, you, you're trying to 
I suppose sometimes, yeah, you really think deeply about things. You might go to certain yeah. dark places to just to analyse something, you know. Well, you did Cer to write Black Drapes. Or maybe you wrote afterwards, did you? Yeah, maybe during or after, maybe. Actually, it took that, song, that particular song took me a while to write, actually. And even in the studio, it started off as a different kind of song. But I think, yeah, you're, you, you try to you look at, analyse things and, you, you know... Um, you go to, yeah, when writing yeah. songs, you try and analyse things and maybe go to think of things in a dark, that might be dark. You would, that normally, if you're not writing, you might just, no, yes. leave that, you know. Yeah, I completely but agree. But whereas you have to kind of delve into it to maybe yeah. look at it and see, okay. and I guess, yeah. So. Pork, thanks for coming up. Very welcome, uh, thanks for having it. me. It's a long, a long trek yeah. for you. Uh, yeah. Really enjoy the tune. So before we play out with the Black Drapes, Pork Jack, Dot com, where you're going to go and buy the album. Yep. Uh, I want to thank um, Niall from the Wood, Wood Park Studios, Yanko Genov, our audio engineer, Ben. Um, MG Audio gave us lots of production, and in particular, Dunboyne Castle, who supplied this location for us because our studio was too small for social distancing. Uh, like, subscribe, and share, please. And want to get this new music out there. And once again, thank you, Porig. Thanks very this much. Thank you. Porig, Jack. Black drapes. A lonely long road at two in the morning. If I could just get home, no thoughts or warnings. And I am feeling, I am. Couldn't sleep last night, my head in a fever And now I feel so bad, doesn't get any clearer And I'm feeling, I'm feeling blue You think that life can't go on when you see the cerebral veil, it's like the red of hell draped in black.
right now, but it's right now. It's all right now, but it's right now. It's all right now, but it's right now.